Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can enter a parameterized question in SQPC model. But before we do that, let's have a look what is the difference between a normal question and a parametric question. So right now on my screen, you can see I have a question given here. And for the same question, I have got a answer also. So the problem with this question is that this question is going to be the same for all the students attempting the exam in which this question is there. And the solution remains same for all the students who will be writing this exam. On the other hand, if we'll talk about a parametric question, then for each student, the question and the answer will vary. So something like this. Now, right now you can see we have a distance of 147 kilometer and time is three hours. Another distance is 276 kilometer. Another time is four hours. And for other student, it will become different. And similarly, the solution will keep changing. So for different student, different combination of variables will be there. This is what we mean by parametric question. Now, in this case, you can see those parameters are changing. So for example, those distance to different values of distance in my questions are different parameters. Those two time values are two different parameters for me. And if I want to frame this question as parameters, I can do something like this. Now, at this point of time, it seems a little confusing so just let's have a look how we can do that on the portal without any confusion okay so right now on my portal and you can see i have a non-parametric question section we have where i have already entered the question so this is the question text that i have already entered and this is the solution this is the rubrics that i have also added so for my question i'm expecting the student to calculate total distance traveled total time taken as per the question and then average speed by taking a ratio of those two and then commenting the final answer. So for my solution, I have three different rubrics which I have added and this is the same thing that I have written on my uh, rubrics part also, you can see here. Now this is a fixed question, so this is not going to vary for a, any students, right? So we can convert the same question into a parametric question. Just have a look how we can do that. So what I have done is I have created the same copy in the parametric question section also so that I can show you very quickly how we can change a question to a parametric question if it's normal. So right now what I'm going to do in, in this question, I have got 120 kilometer as, as some uh, distance, two hours as some time. Then we have another distance 180 kilometer and another time as four hours. So instead of 120, I'm going to delete this 120 and I'm going to put two at the rate symbol and then I'm going to say this variable as distance one because this is the first distance given in my question and then again I'll place this into double uh, at the rate symbol. So this double at the rate symbol says that anything between these two double, um, double at the rate symbol is basically a parameter for me and you can see the moment I complete this I got a definition of this that variable here where I have to define what this distance one refers to. And I'll do the same thing here also. So I'm going to replace this two by time one. So basically time one is another variable for me. And I'll do the same thing for this 180 kilometer also. And this is going to be distance two for me. One thing that you can note, uh, you do not need to put any spaces between the variables names. So if I try to write distance space two, it should be wrong. So we should try to avoid that and we should not have any spaces between the variables names. If it has more than one words, you can just write next to each other. And similarly, I'm going to replace this four by uh, the second uh, time parameter. And I'm going to say this is at time two. So for now, I have given four different parameters, distance one, time one, distance two, time two. And right now you can see these are those four parameters where I have to define what this actually means. Now I can define in multiple ways. We have got a lot of uh, function to define this. You can see there is a random function. So if we'll give two numbers, it will randomly generate one number between those two numbers. We have a pick random concept also where you can give us a series of numbers from which system will pick automatically one. So I'll show both of them how we can use it. And you can explore, there are a lot more functions which you can use, so please feel free to explore as, as per your convenience. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to define this distance one. So I can write like this, R-A-N-D for random, bracket start, and I can give a number. 
so if you remember in our actual question the value was 180 so what i'm going to say i'll say random uh, 120 so what does it mean is generate any number a random number between 100 and 200 okay and the moment i'll click outside you can see a random number has been generated which is 100 10 and this will keep changing every time the calculation will happen so sometime if a student get a distance such as 119 it can be a little difficult to calculate uh, without a calculator and if you are of the opinion that uh, it should be multiple of 10 then instead of random you can go with pick a random command and there you can simply replace this by something like this where you are saying pick a random and then you are giving those 10 or 11 whatever uh, those random values so for example 100 110 120 all of them are separated by the comma so this way you can give a series of number and you can expect us to um, uh, select a number out of this so for now i'm going with this command only uh, i'm going to use uh, pick random only and if i click outside now you can see 130 is by default selected so you can be assured that uh, the distance one is going to be always multiple of 10 and this will be out of these options only similarly for time uh, i'm going to simply use the random function and i'm going to say one two three so time can be one hour or two hour considering zero significant digit precision if the precision is too significant digit then time can be anything starting from one to two point nine nine but not certainly three the last argument is always exclusive in this case it is three i can go with decimal also if i want so for example right now the, the random generated time value is 2 if i'll go with two significant digit it will become 1.6 and since i want integer value for all those four parameters i'll keep zero significant digit as precision only i'll do the same thing for the distance 2 value also so i'm just going to replace this with pick random and this time i have got number from 300 to 400 at an interval of 10 and i can do the same thing for the uh, time two values also i can simply place a command here uh, random between four and six so four and five are two possible value that i can get considering zero significant digit precision so you can see right now uh, i have got distance one value as 140 time one value is two time distance two value is 400 and time two value is four so basically uh, you can place this for 140 here uh, two at, at the place of time one and so on so and this is how you can assume that this is how the question will look like for a student and this number will keep changing for all other students now once we do that uh, we have to create the rubrics also so i have already created the text based rubrics and the way you simply do it is you just click here on plus rubrics and then you just type your solution so this is my um, solution something like this and you keep writing your answers okay and then you come here and you replace with those parameters okay? i have already entered the required rubrics i have to just convert this into a, a parametric form now in this case 121 it will not matter because this 120 should be equal to this one 140 now because this is not the value the student is going to get so instead of hard coding this to 120 or 180 what we can say is uh, just remove this 120 and i'll say double add the red symbol and here at this place i'm expecting distance one to be there and in place of this i'm expecting distance two to be there okay so basically what does it mean is 140 kilometer plus 400 kilometer and by default this number should be something like sum of this number plus sum of this number uh, plus this one okay so at this place we should have a value 400 and 140 which is 540 kilometer and you can see i'm very cleverly just replacing the numeric part i'm not touching the uh, units of my rubrics now here what i can do is instead of writing this i can also create another variable and i'll say basically this is um, total time taken 
so this is another variable because i have not used this in my question but even here i can create a new variable and the moment i'll create a new variable by putting this uh, between two at the red symbol you can see now it is inside my uh, solution also uh, this this table also and here what i can say is total time taken okay not total time taken because it is total distance taken uh, distance taken and here i can say is total distance taken is actually distance one plus distance two and if i click outside you can see distance one is 200 and uh, distance two is 340 and the sum of these two is 540 so that means total distance is getting calculated very accurately here so uh, this simply means 540 kilometer the same thing applies here also i can simply replace this two by at the rate at the rate and then i can say time one at the rate at the rate some people call it at only so that's totally your choice how you want to call it and then i'll say double at and then i can say time two and this is the variable names are case sensitive so make sure uh, you are using the case of these variables the same way you have used in your question otherwise it will create a different uh, parameters altogether for you which is not what you want and instead of this six hours i'm going to replace this with another variable and i'm going to say total time taken so this is another variable i'm creating and the value of this variable uh, should be equal to time one plus time two and if i click outside you can see one plus five is equal to six so basically this will become six hour and this time one is basically one hour so here we'll have one hour plus five hours is equal to six hours okay this is what actually we are uh, calculating and at this point of time uh, in order to calculate the average speed i have to divide this total distance traveled which is basically total distance uh, okay in my case i have written as taken let me change it back to uh, traveled let me capitalize this cap t okay so now i can okay now i can define this again because i have changed the parameter name uh, distance one plus distance two okay it's working fine now i can take this parameter now and instead of total distance travel i can type that parameter name again and total time taken we have already calculated this also so we'll simply copy the variable name from here and we'll place it with at the rate within the uh, double at the rate symbol now one thing that you can also notice in the variable definition we are not using the at the rate symbol okay so for example in order to define this variable i'm using distance one and distance two so i'm not using at the rate symbol but wherever you are uh, within the rubrics, whenever you are within the rubrics or for that matter within this question, you have to make sure your variables are within the double at the rate symbol. Okay, and this is one thing that you need to be particularly uh, careful with. Okay, so I think I, I have done something wrong here. This should have been at this place and here we should have got the text itself. Uh, not the value so it should be something like this so what i'm going to do i'm going to define this 50 as another variable and i'll tell you the reason why i'm defining this as a, another variable and i'm going to put at the uh, red symbol leading and trailing one now here here if you look uh, this average speed is another variable and if i'll come here this is where i have reached so basically this average speed is nothing more than total distance traveled by uh, total time taken so i can paste it here and it should work fine and this this uh, ratio cannot be integer always because it uh, uh, any 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 combination is possible 
So I can say, okay, give me answer till two significant digit, which is 78.33. Now, if I try to write the same thing in parametric form here, we cannot control how many digit we can show in the uh, in the answer. So what I can do is I can simply cut this out and I can use a round function. So round basically uh, my number. So round and then I'm going to take the ratio of this and I'm going to round it and I can define the uh, digit by which I'm going to round it up. So I'm going to type two bracket close and if I click outside, you can see I have got a the same average speed in two digit and I can be sure that this average speed will always be in two decimal point. And again, instead of this 50, I'm going to put this double at the rate symbol and I'm going to place this parameter here and something like this. Let me format this a little bit. Okay. So this is how you enter a question in parametric form. This is the parametric table that you have. This is where you define the decimal points. And this is where you define the rubrics. Initially, it can be a little confusing, but as you'll practice, you'll find it more appropriate. And once it is done, since this, this particular question is of 15 marks, I have to ensure that this rubrics also adds up to 15, although it's not compulsory. But yeah, it is a good practice. So I'm going to say if someone calculates this to total distance travel correctly, I can give them five marks. And the same thing applies here also. So I'm going to define this as five also. And I'll do the same thing here also. And once it is done, I can click on save. And for now, you can argue that there is no way to preview it. Uh, but we are just adding a very, very quick, simple way to preview what you have written is basically getting rendered the way uh, something like this or not with the values and in order to check that you can simply click on print and print with answer click on print and right now if you're able to see there is a, there is no rendering uh, happening of with those parametric values for example uh, distance one value is uh, something uh, that should come here and distance two should come here so that you can see uh, it is getting rendered um, but in in due course of time probably when you are watching this video that will be rolled out and you'll be able to see that instead of this parametric value you are getting the actual value which is getting uh, generated by this variable table okay so this is one way you can figure it out how how your solution will look like with the values and the other thing that we are also working on is to the to show you the live preview so it will take some time but uh, in, in coming days you'll be able to see the live preview also what does it mean is if for example when i'm defining a variable here you can see that i'm able to see a value here so when you write this how it will actually look like to the uh, students uh, sorry to the evaluators okay so you'll be able to see those live preview next to it also probably on the right side or left side depending upon how we go about it so this is how you add a question and of course whenever you do this it's always a good idea to save the paper and uh, if you have some time please go ahead and do a self-test So that's all in this video. Thank you very much for watching this video.